Hey guys, today I'm going to make a very basic Anki video to explain how I use Anki myself, especially to those of you who are new to Anki. I hope this video will help you better understand Anki and use it more productively for your needs. So let me just give a very basic introduction of what Anki is about. It's basically an application that is targeted towards active recall and space repetition, which is a very efficient study technique. I find that it's most suitable for you to learn as well as to remember your content for an extended period of time. Anki is very good for very heavy content subjects such as maybe geography or history. Basically, it's very good for things where there's a lot of information that you need to remember for an extended period of time. Anki, just open your web browser and you search Anki right here. And click on this first thing that you see here. After that, you will be at the Anki page. And once you scroll down, you will find the download link for Anki. It's available on all these platforms right here for free, except which, except for I believe iPhone, iOS, where you need to pay to use it for to use Anki. So just click on the download link below, and you'll get started. So after you've downloaded Anki, you will come to its user interface right here. So there's a couple of terms down here. DEX, when you click it, is for you to see the whole list of DEX that you've created. It's also a shortcut that I use to get back to the main page after I'm done reviewing a DEX or a particular DEX. You can use the word add to help to add a card into your DEX. Browse is a shortcut for you to look at all the DEX that we have and search up for one. You can use stats to review the cards they have gone through today. And for sync, it's useful when you want to use Anki across multiple devices. So maybe across your iPhone, your Mac, or even your Windows PC. So you can use sync to sync all your decks together. I personally don't use this sync, this sync feature because I only use Anki on my MacBook. You can also choose to export your Anki deck so that you can perhaps save it in your thumb drive so that you can have a backup storage. I personally use DEX, DEX and ADD the most because I find it because I don't really use the other three features right here. Another useful thing is the fact that you can create subdivided folders in Anki. So for example, I press create that here. Let us see, I call it Anki. And then I can create another DEX. So maybe I call it Anki test. And I can insert this Anki test right here. So that this will fall, this will fall under this. So this will help you when you want to class, when you want to classify different different topics into different subjects. Now let's try to make a card. So let's go into this Anki test deck right here. And since you have no cards right now, obviously you have nothing to study. So let's make a card. So you press add, and you'll see this interface to make cards. There are different types of cards that you can make, ranging from basic to image occlusion enhance. I've personally never used any of these except for closed, because I didn't find the need to use any other forms of cards. But for image occlusion enhance, I've heard that it's very useful when you want to remember things for images. So maybe something like this that you see right here. And you want to try and recall all these words that matches to their particular body part. So that's why we can blank out all these words and tally to the, their body parts right there. So this will be how I use image occlusion enhanced. So let me just just go on to talking about close right here, because I think that's the most common one to use. So basically for Anki, you have a lot of the same features, both tally size to this underline, and you can also superscript. So for example, you can press something on top, or you can also subscript, and type something at the bottom. This EX right here simply means that it will return the whole formatting back to its original original way. So maybe let's say you type something like A, A, B, C, and then you proceed to bold, underline, oops, then you go and bold, underline, italicize them. Then if you press this EX symbol right here, you will go back to normal. You can also choose from a lot of different colors from Anki. As you can see right here, there's a few color choices. And you can go to 
these other versions if you want more variety in your choices. But I usually just stick to the, the basic colors that they provide for me. So after you select a color, you will change over here. So this will be a color that you'll be selecting. Now, the thing about Anki is that I don't know if there's a way to select more colors for you to write down here. Because if you want to color, color classify a lot of things, it can get a bit difficult and very tedious to keep going to this color scheme to change the color. But I don't have any workaround for that for now. So basically for Anki, once you get used to it, it's basically an application that can let you blank out some stuff that you want to remember. So maybe let's say I type a question. What is the powerhouse of the cell? Then it's like, it's my mitochondria or something. I never take biology after after secondary school. So after you are done, you can blank out this. You can press this triple dot right here. Or can just use the shortcut with this command shift C. So after this, you have you have added a card. So let's just try to press add and close it. So you press study now. Then now you can see that you don't know what is the answer. So you can use the question, what is the powerhouse of the cell? Then we press enter, the answer will come out. And you just see if you get the answer right or wrong. Another, another thing about Anki is that you can also attach images, voice audio, as well as engage in math equations, as you can see right here, when you press this triple horizontal line. You have a lot more options to do in Anki. The concept of Anki, I think, is to add a lot of cuts of many small bits of information so that you can study at a very quick pace a lot of stuff at a very short amount of time. So usually what people do with Anki is that they will add a lot of cuts. So let's say add another cut here. Then I blank it up. Then I've added another cut. And then I'll proceed to add another cut. So I don't know anymore. Then I will add another cut also. So currently right now for this deck itself, I'll have three cards to study. So basically your my first card, then my second card, and then my third card. And then I'm done studying this whole deck. Another thing about Anki is that you can also blank out many things at once. So for example, you can have I don't know what to type, so just for example. Then you will see this C1 right here. Then you can move on to another thing. So and now this at C2. And finally. So basically after you've added this card, then you can have multiple things that are blank go blank out. So let's say add and let's say I want to study this. So basically you can blank out the what? 1, 2, 3, then followed by the 4, 5, 6, then next the 7, 8, 9. But the thing is, I don't understand what's the point of doing this because I've already seen the answers 4, 5, 6, and 7, 8, 9 anyway. So how I use Anki is mainly in a different way through the use of a code that I found online. The thing is that I don't like Anki's way of having multiple cards to study because I feel that all these all this clicking that I do will eventually cost me a lot of microseconds that will add up in the long run. So what I prefer was to see my whole con the whole content that I had to study in a single page and I just flow through the page when I go and study it. So I found this code online that was very helpful to modify Anki to suit my needs. So when you go over to cards, these are the very basic settings that Anki will come with. So what I did was I found a code online to change the back template into this. Uh, you know, just ignore this error for now because I've, I didn't input any closed deletion. So after you, if you have inputted this script right here, then after you are done inputting the script, we will make back the same card again. So as you can see back in cards, I have the same script that I inputted right here. But this time, we have to change all the closed deletion. Closed deletion meaning the things that you want to plan go up all into C1. Okay, now that you press close. So this time when you study, everything here is blank out. And when you press, so once you figure out whether you got whether you remembered the content you want here, you press enter. 
then you'll see. But at the same time, the 456 that you have seen and 789 that you have seen is also blanko out. So in this in this case for me, it just makes more sense for it to be done this way. Because then I wouldn't have seen the next few answers that I want. So using the script right there, it just makes a lot more sense for me when I'm using Anki. So let's say for example, I want to remember the macroeconomic goals. So all I, can, all I can do is I can blank out this and maybe I just want to leave the first letter to give me a hint. So I can blank out this, blank out this, blank out this, and then blank out this. Maybe I leave FA so I can distinguish myself. Then I change all to C1. And then let's say for example, maybe I want to study maybe some some poem. No, I, don't, I don't know my typing right here. So maybe I just want to blank out like some parts so that I can give myself some hints when I want to remember stuff. So maybe when there is wind, then I blank out, start to blow because I want to remember that. Then the leaves, same thing, I just blank out the other part. Then I want to know what is coming, so maybe I blank out spring. And then same thing, I change all to C1. So after that you close it, then you try to study again. So macro economy goes F full employment. Then once I think that I remember it correctly as full employment, I'll press enter. And then you can see that all the other parts are still blanko out. So it leaves me the room to study all these other blanko out parts. I personally just really like this flow downwards rather than Anki's own method of reading multiple cards, reading a card at a time and having a whole stack of cards in a deck. Just to show you an example of a deck that I made in the past, maybe i just show you my physics deck, motion in a circle. So basically, I've used this technique where I, where I coded, when I blank out everything that I think is important for me to remember. And then I also include some pictures here and there for me when I engage in my studies. So basically, I just find this flow downwards just a lot more easier for me to study compared to having a lot of cards to study in a particular deck. So this is how I personally use Anki myself. So basically, that is how I use Anki myself. I will leave a code for the script to the back template in the description down below. So if you want to use that script, just feel free to do so. Until today, I'm still very thankful for the guy who created that code of that, that script so that I could have effectively used Anki myself. But too bad I cannot find the link to the source anymore. So yeah, that's how I use Anki myself. If you like the video, just please drop a like and subscribe and I'll keep more videos coming. Thank you and see you.